Let's do another charged rod problem. We're going to make this one a little harder. So. So instead of thinking about the electric field here along the axis, we're going to think about the electric field here, sort of perpendicular to the rod and centered on the rod. So let me draw the rod down here so I have plenty of room. So here's the rod. Down here. And again, we're going to put the rod on the x-axis like that. And the point P is along the center, so we're going to put the y-axis centered on the rod, just like this, all the way up. Okay? And the point P, we'll say, is right here. That's where we want to find the electric field, to the side of the rod. The rod is still has a charge density lambda, and it still has a length L, and we're going to make this the origin so that this is at the point L over 2. And this end is at the point minus L over 2, OK? So we go from there. Um, it's the same trick. We're going to think of this charged rod as a bunch of little elements dx. So here's one here, dx. And we're going to write DEP just like before. So uh, DEP, I'll start here. And we just have to start writing it and thinking about what it would be. Here is what we're treating as an isolated charge. Here's a point P. I'll start with the good part, KE. There. You can do KE. Um, the charge is DQ. But from the last problem, you know we can write the charge as lambda DX. It's just the charge unit length times the length of the element. So I'll go ahead and write lambda DX here. And now we have to think about the distance. What is the distance from dx to p? Well, we can draw it, sort of a dotted line like that, and see that it's a right triangle. That helps. Because we know this side of the triangle, a, we know it's a distance a from the axis. And we know this side of the triangle, because we know the x position of all the dx's. Okay? Here it's actually sitting at negative x. You could also have it here at positive x, we're going to think about it everywhere between minus L over 2 and L over 2. So if that's the case, then this length is the square root of a squared plus x squared. Okay? We just use Pythagorean theorem on that triangle. Now, we'll talk about it in a minute when you have to be careful whether you have minus x or plus x and it can make a difference. Here it doesn't matter because right, you're squaring the x. So whether you're over here in the minus x values or the plus x values, if you're just getting that length, it doesn't, doesn't, not an issue because it's squared. So down here, we have to write that thing squared. So basically, the square root goes away. It's over a squared plus x squared. Okay. That's the magnitude of DEP. All right. We have our magnitude. Now, DEP is a vector, and we're solving a vector problem. So when we were getting the electric field at a point just along the length, everything was in one dimension. To make it a vector, we just slapped on i hat, because it was in the x axis. Now, we have multiple vector components. We have to think about the fact that DEP is at an angle. And in reality, DEP has an x component, DEPx, and DEP has a y component. D, E, P, Y. So we have to separate those. Well, all you really do is say, well, if this is at some angle theta, then this is just D, E, P times the cosine of that angle. So cosine theta on the i hat. And then we write the magnitude again. K, E, lambda, D, X over A squared plus X squared and sine theta. j hat. So you literally just, you know it's at an angle. So you just break it into two components. It wasn't so hard. We'll have to deal with it in a minute. But that's how you break it into the components. So here we have the full expression for DEP. Okay. Now, we want EP. We want the electric field 
at point P, so we know we have to integrate. We have to sum up all of our DEPs to get the full field. Um, let's see then, that means we have to integrate this whole thing. And uh, the limits are going to be what? Minus L over 2 to L over 2. Minus L over 2 to L over 2. Okay. And now we want to write this again. But we want to think about everything in the integral that depends on x. We have to rewrite in terms of x. Okay. So let's see. Ke and lambda don't depend on x. So I'm actually going to make myself a little room and just put those in the front. Okay. Those are in each one. We can pull those out just to make it not so messy. So then we're left with dx over a squared plus x squared. And then cosine theta, though, does depend on where you are. It does depend on x. Because we can think about this angle theta. As we move this around, this angle is going to change, clearly. So we need to get an expression for cosine theta in terms of x. So what we have to realize is that this theta is the same as this theta. Okay. And we look at this right triangle again, and this is how we can figure out what cosine theta is. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's this x value over um, this hypotenuse value. So cosine theta is actually minus x over the square root of a squared plus x squared. I hat. And it is minus, okay, because it's, you've got to be very careful with this sometimes. Here, when we move to minus x, this angle is positive. You usually think of angles as positive from the x-axis. When we go from minus x, this is positive. The cosine of this angle, it has to come out positive, okay, because it's a positive angle. The cosine of a positive angle less than 90 degrees is positive. So we have to have a positive number over this, which has to be a positive number because it's a square root. So when you're over here, the x's are negative, so you have to put a negative in front of it make the cosine come out positive, okay? There are other ways you could set it up where you wouldn't have to do that. And if you think about it in this case, as you go x goes positive, what's going to happen is the theta is actually going to go greater than 90 degrees. So that uh, positive negative aspect, aspect would work out even when you're over here. So be a little bit careful with your negatives. But for now, the way we've set it up, we stick a negative x there. Um, the j component would be basically the same thing. In fact, I'm going to put a bracket there. It's that same amplitude in front, dx over x a squared plus x squared um, times the sine of theta. And the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So here there's no plus or minus to worry about. It's just a, a over the square root of a squared plus x squared j hat. Okay. So now we have everything in terms of uh, X. So we can kind of simplify it a little bit and say now our EP that we care about is equal to KE lambda times the integral from minus L over 2 to L over 2 of, and now we're going to combine uh, these. This term, first term, will be um, minus X DX over, and now we're going to combine these. This is really, you could think of it as a squared plus x squared to the two halves. This is a squared plus x squared to the one half. So when you multiply them, you just add. That's how you get these funny things like a squared plus x squared to the three halves. Right? So we just combine those two denominators. And that's on the i hat plus uh, a over the denominator is the same, a squared plus x squared the three halves on the j half. Okay. And the integral applies to both terms, O and uh, any of the dx. They both have a dx, of course. So all we got to do is solve that integral.